right, Chris, you're watching the SEC on ESPN. ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com as we welcome you to Neyland Stadium in Knoxville for a game featuring arguably the surprise team in college football. The 8-1 Auburn Tigers, ninth in the BCS standings, winless in the conference a year ago, but in the conference championship discussion, only one game back of Alabama, and they play the Tide in Auburn three weeks from today. And the chief engineer of college football's biggest turnaround, Gus Malzahn, his first year as head coach. He was the offensive coordinator, Cam Newton's national title team in 2010. Went to Arkansas State for a one-year stint there as their head coach. And when Gene Chizik was fired, Malzahn returns. And speaking of junior college quarterbacks, there's Nick Marshall. Like Cam Newton, transferred from a JC and is starting battling a shoulder injury last week. But he's healthy, according to coaches, and good to go today. So to come out to the 25, let's check in now with Tom Luganbill, our national director of recruiting for ESPN. Well, guys, three high-profile players along the defensive front. Elijah Daniel, Montrevious Adams, and Carl Lawson have made an immediate impact for Ellis Johnson, the defensive coordinator. They will give the offensive line of Tennessee all they can handle, and a true freshman quarterback can expect the heat today. All right, Lugie. Auburn won the toss, elected to defer. So Tennessee starts on offense. It's quarterback, true freshman Joshua Dobbs, making his first career home start. And they'll run the ball on first and 10 to Ray on Neal. He's out to the 30-yard line for about five. Ryan Smith on the tackle. Dobbs, a freshman from Alpharetta, Georgia. He is replacing the injured Justin Worley, who started seven games. Yeah, it's got to feel good for Josh Dobbs to finally be at home. You know, he came in the Alabama game on the road, started the last week against Missouri on the road. Now he's back in the friendly confines of Neal Stadium. They have been a different team at home as the pass is pulled in by Marquez North, his 33rd catch in the year, but a yard shy of the first down. Remember, Tennessee beat South Carolina back on October 19th here at home, ending a string of 19 straight losses against ranked teams. Yeah, you can see Josh Dobbs still looking for his first touchdown pass of his career. He's been a little up and down, although the coaches from Tennessee are very confident in his ability to run this offense. The big third down here for confidence. They did not play well in Missouri. And the offensive and defensive lines were called soft by their head coach, Butch Jones. They padded up, went full pads, live tackling in practice this week. We got a penalty marker down, so instead of third down and in inches, it'll be third down and six. Oh, and Tennessee had a really tough time last week jumping offsides that offensive line six times. They were offsides. Prior to the snap, false start. Number 64 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. That's the center, James Stone. Yeah, James Stone right in the middle, obviously. I didn't see him move. Maybe Zach Fulton, the right yeah, guard, I think so. moved a little bit. Number yep. 72, but third and seven now. That brings the passing game into the equation. This is a good offensive line, and you said it, Brian, earlier in the year. Maybe the best offensive line in the SEC, but struggled of late. And Dobbs taking off. Got a lane and has the first down. Middle of this defensive line opens wide up. You got to be disciplined in your rush lanes if you're Auburn. They've been very good rushing the passer this year. It's been one of the biggest differences in this defense from a year ago. But you can't just say in third and long, I'm going to tee off on the quarterback. You've got to keep your lane. There's Marlon Lane. Up the gut to the 45-yard line. About six there. Ryan Smith on the tackle as Tennessee trying to get lined up quickly. Yeah, trying to get some momentum, some rhythm for this offense. Mike Pajaki and the offensive coordinator going quick. And Dobbs, here comes a blitz. Dobbs gets nailed. Jump ball coming back to it. To make the catch is north inside the 30-yard line. Josh Dobbs knows when he's in trouble, just throw the ball to Marquez North. 6'4", 215 pounds, and he can go up and get it. You're going to see the safety come off the edge, unaccounted for. Dobbs sees it late and just give North an opportunity. He fair catches it. Here's an inside pitch, and Pig Howard hit for a loss back at the 27-yard line. 
Jermaine Whitehead was back there. D Ford as well. They really want to get the ball in Pig Howard's hands. He had a career high 11 catches against Missouri, but a lot of those were for short yardage. Well, he's their most explosive player, and he's, it lines up almost exclusively in the slot. Looks like a blitz look from Auburn. Safety's creeping down. Josh Dobbs looks over sometimes to the sideline to get the check from Mike Pajakian. It's Neal getting to the outside. And a beautiful open field tackle by Ryan Smith at the 22. Still a four-yard pickup. And third down and long coming up for Tennessee. When Tennessee has had success on offense, they have run the football with Rajon Neal. They have supplemented that with Pig Howard in the slot. And Marquez North is their go-to guy against man-to-man -man coverage. A big third and six right here. The Tennessee coaches told us they wanted to run the ball and take a shot. They did. It worked out with North putting him in field goal range. They'd love to convert here on third down and seven and keep the chains moving. And Dobbs with one-on-one -on -one coverage trying to hit Howard, who was well covered on the sideline by Robinson Therese. So it's fourth down. And it's interesting the approach that Auburn has taken early coming into this game. They've been almost exclusively a man-to-man -man team on defense, but they understand and realize the big play potential of Marquez North. They're choosing to double him and play some more zones and make Josh Dobbs read the defense. They got him there on that third down. Michael Pilardi, 10 of 12 on the year. He had the game-winning field goal against South Carolina here a few weeks ago. Now to put Tennessee on the board. So an excellent start for the ball, something they needed. Lacking confidence on offense the last couple of weeks, being blown out by Alabama and Missouri. But a good first drive here at home against Auburn. And Pilardi with a 39-yard field goal. And it's 3-0 Tennessee. This is College Football on ESPN, presented by Cars.com. Dave Pash, Brian Greasy, Tom Luganville in Knoxville. Dobbs in Tennessee with a nice opening drive. Marquez North had that one-handed catch to set up the game-winning field goal against South Carolina. Big catch here on a pass that was under throw when Dobbs was hit. And that sets up Pilardi for a 39-yarder. And Tennessee with the early lead on Auburn. Balls have had three straight losing seasons in conference play. And they're one and four in the SEC coming into this one. Short kickoff, and here's the outstanding Trey Mason. Out past the 25-yard line of the 27. Today's impact players brought to you by Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. Now you mentioned Trey Mason on special teams, but offensively he's been their spark plug, leads the SEC in rushing touchdowns with 13 of them. And when the defense comes up, Sammy Coates is their big play receiver down the field. It's going to be incumbent upon A.J. Johnson, these linebackers for Tennessee, really to use their eyes and trust their eyes against this zone read attack of Auburn. Auburn leads the SEC in rushing, sixth in the country. Tennessee last in the SEC in rush defense. And over the last four games, giving up 250 yards per game on the ground. And a pass play on first down. That's rare for Auburn. Sammy Coates stays in bounds and then drilled at the 40-yard line. Only two passes last week, and their win at Arkansas went beyond the line of scrimmage. <laughs> Nine passes in all. Now, Marshall wasn't 100% last yeah, week, battling all, a shoulder injury. In all fairness, he was throwing, in, uh, throwing shoulder an injury, and so Gus Malzahn just didn't feel comfortable throwing the football out, and they were running it so well, they didn't need to. How about this? Back-to-back -back pass plays. Coates on the wide receiver screen. Wrapped up by Cameron Sutton for a loss. <laughs> True freshman Sutton, one of the more mature players on this Tennessee team, according to the coaches. And a loss of three on the play. 
And I like the approach from Auburn to come out. Everybody expects them to run the football almost exclusively. Come out and soften up this Tennessee defense. Make them respect the quick passing game to open up your running attack. They're going to throw it on three consecutive plays. This one is dropped. Open inside, or right at the 45-yard line on the play was Tony Stevens. They didn't play a whole lot, and you can see why. Great anticipation on that throw from Nick Marshall. That's the area he needs to continue to improve. He's throwing the ball in the intermediate routes. Been pretty good down the field to Sammy Coates. Stevens needed to make a play for him. Third down is the area where Nick Marshall's feet have killed defenses. You have to account for him, even if he drops back to pass. Here comes a blitz off the edge, and down goes the quarterback. It's Cameron Sutton who comes firing into the backfield to take down Marshall. Great call from John Jansen, the defensive coordinator. Just a corner fire off the edge. Nick Marshall never sees it. You have to see that as a quarterback. That's your responsibility. Just hasn't had enough reps in the passing game to know about those protections. Why, when you've been absolutely leaning on people, pounding the football, do you come out of the first series and throw it on every play? Well, I think everybody knows that Tennessee's going to come up and try to stop that run, and you have to take some pressure off of that running game with the passing game. Ray Guy semifinalist Stephen Clark on the punt. And down by Farisi at the 13 yard line. Great physical start on offense for Tennessee, and their defense gets a stop early. Tennessee has the ball again, leading Auburn early. 3 0. What are the keys to beating this? Tiger team. Yeah, it's uh, for their offense, Tennessee, on that first drive. Good drive. They've got to beat man-to-man -man coverage. Auburn loves to come up and play physical, beat man-to-man. -man. You talked about it. Butch Jones challenged his offensive line to be physical. Last week against Missouri, didn't get the job done. Josh Dobbs has to continue to make good decisions. Then pop the pig. Get Pig Howard the football, both in the running game and the passing game. He's their most explosive player. Needs to be a part of this offensive plan today. And he had Auburn, which last week started the game with 14 consecutive rush plays. Today, they throw it on first, second, third down and go three and out. Ball inside the Tennessee 15-yard line. They'll run it here on first down. Not much. Out to the 15-yard line is Marlon Lane. So a gain of only two on the play. And we talked about last night with, with Butch Jones the importance of getting being aggressive and getting a positive start. He talked about these players for Tennessee being in, institutionalized, basically. When bad things happen, they can't turn them around. That was very important for them to get that first drive scoring. And here's Dobbs on the keep, trying to get the corner. And well defended by Robinson Therese, junior out of Miami, Florida, who's really played well. You know, as you look at this Auburn defense, it's the same guys that were here last year for the Tigers when they went 0-8 in the SEC. Yeah, and it's it's a different attitude, and it's amazing when you get the right attitude and guys that want to play for each other, and you get the leadership of both Gus Malzahn and Ellis Johnson. What a difference it can make. Johnson, their defensive coordinator. There's third down and eight. They'll go empty. Dobbs, long throw, well short of the first down. Jonathan Johnson on the grab, but Tennessee will have to punt. And when you come out and you run the ball on the first and second down, come up in third and eight, I think Ellis Johnson realizes I'm just going to make them throw the ball short, come up and make the tackle. And that time, great job by Auburn tackling in the open field. And Pilardi, like Auburn, Stephen Clark named semifinalist for the Ray Guy Award. So two of the ten guys on that list are in this ball game. Chris Davis, the deep man for Auburn. This is a returnable kick. Davis across the 40. In the Tennessee territory. The kicker to beat. And look at Pilardi fighting with Davis to get him out of bounds. But Auburn will have the ball at the Tennessee 22. Chris Davis has been one of the best punt returners in the SEC this year, and you can see why. Great vertical cut. 
most important thing for a punt return is to get north and south, and you're right. Pilardi saves a touchdown. Pilardi does it all. Place kick, punting, and tackling. That uh, was a 42-yard return, but it would have been a lot worse if not for Pilardi. We'll see now how the Tennessee defense responds. First run play of the day, and down goes the back. Trey Mason grabbed from behind by A.J. Johnson. He did well to make sure he didn't get a horse collar penalty here. Great job by A.J. Johnson. He sees the pulling guard, goes right behind him, right on his hip. That's the way that you stop that outside running attack. When you pull that guard, that linebacker reads it and follows right on his hip. Well done by A.J. Johnson. Leading tackler for Tennessee. Loss of three on the play. Now Marshall to the air. Towards the end zone. That's a terrific throw. And it's caught by C.J. Uzama for the touchdown. The wheel route is the favorite route of Gus Malzahn in this offense. And Uzama ran it perfectly. That was Don Tavis sap that was in man-to-man -man coverage. Didn't get his eyes back to make a play on the football. And a great throw from Nick Marshall. And Auburn with only 10 players on the field right now. And now they shift the kicker back. The holder is Ryan White. He's a former quarterback. And Cody Parkey made 90 consecutive extra points. And just as I say that, he misses. That was the longest streak in the SEC. But he got it blocked. Take a look at this throw from Nick Marshall. People say he can't throw the ball. He begs to differ. Great route from Uzama. Great start for Auburn in response to that field goal drive from Tennessee. And big six foot eight Daniel McCullers with the block one after. ESPN College Football is presented by Cars.com. Get the right car without all the drama. Cars.com. All drive, no drama. And in part by the 2013 Ford F-150 with EcoBoost. Homecoming weekend here in Knoxville. Tennessee has lost just twice since 1984 on homecoming. Wyoming in 2008 and Miami when it was ranked number one in the country in 2002. They trail 6-3 to Auburn. A blocked extra point by McCullers, who had Tennessee's last blocked point after a year ago against Georgia. 42-yard punt return by Chris Davis set up the touchdown pass by Marshall, and Tennessee will start on the 25. Well, and Tennessee defensively has taken some chances with their corner blitz. This was earlier in the game. They brought Cam Sutton off the edge, got the sack, and a stop on defense in the first drive. Nick Marshall didn't see it, but they live by the blitz. Sometimes you die by the blitz. They bring it again on this, on this touchdown. Here he is right here. He's going to come off the edge. And here's the tight end. He's going to go on the wheel route. Leaves a man-to-man -man coverage on Dontavis Sapp. Goes right by Sutton. And Sapp never looks back for the ball. And a perfect throw from Nick Marshall. Great adjustment by the Auburn offense, which Gus Malzahn is known for, right? You can bring that corner blitz. He's going to dial up something to beat you. Dobbs on the rollout. And Pig Howard with the grab, and he's out to the 31. Let's check in with Reese Davis in the studio. Dave, good afternoon. Sports Center right now brought to you by Bank of New York Mellon. Texas Tech started the season 7 0. They've lost two in a row, and things are off to a great start. John Hubert going 63. Bill Snyder's team has a 7 3 lead. All right, Reese hits 6 3 here, and a run play as Lane tries to power between the tackles and get the first down, and he appears to have it. On second and three, he gets enough to move the chains to the 36-yard line. Marlon Lane is healthy, missed a game early in the year with a foot injury, and Rayshon Neal really has had a good season, closing in on 800 yards, nine rushing touchdowns. So a good one-two punch, a tailback for Tennessee. 
Here is Neal. And he dives to the 40-yard line. Ryan Smith tripped him up. Pick up a four. I think there's two backs in this game for both teams that are underappreciated in the SEC. Neil, you talked about, and Trey Mason as well. Both of these guys have been very productive in their careers and having the best seasons in their in their uh, career at Tennessee and at Auburn. Think how many good running backs there are in this league right now, but the best, Mike Davis at South Carolina, right? Out of the flat it goes. Neil is loose, got the first down, and into Auburn territory. Chris Frost tracks him down, but after a 15-yard gain. Great job of the offensive line of Tennessee. Look at Tiny Richardson. Doesn't just pass block. He gets out and kicks out on the outside, and then a shallow cut from Rajon Neal. Well-designed play from Mike Bajaki, but Tiny Richardson showing some athletic ability. I'd like to be a corner out there with Big Tiny coming at you. 6'6", 330. <laughs> Here's Lane. Beautiful cutback. To the 36 for about nine. Casanova McKenzie, the linebacker number eight, takes the wrong gap. And that great read from Marlon Lane. Auburn right now is on their heels defensively. Here comes a pass play. And Dodd's going to air it out. Incomplete. No penalty flag. Jonathan Mincy covering Marquez North. And it's third down and ten. Mincy's 5'10". North is 6'4". That's a good no call. Marquez North, you got to fight back to that ball a little bit more than that. Get your arms up. He's got, his, that ball. he's got his hands on him, and he, he doesn't turn around for the ball until the end there. I think the official gives the corner the benefit of the doubt when he looks back for the football. But they shift an extra offensive lineman, Jawan James, over to the left side here. And they're going to run it off the left side. And it's a huge hole. Rajon Neal inside the 25. How about that formation? And it's a 13-yard gain. It was a great adjustment. They bring heavy to the left, get a great block up front from Jawan James and the tight end. Easy conversion. Now Auburn has given up a lot of yards this year, but they don't surrender a lot of points. Neal brought down at the 20-yard line after a gain of three. Auburn comes in 11th in the SEC in total defense, but in terms of points allowed, they're 22nd in the country. They only give up 20 points per game, and they stopped Tennessee the last time the balls got near the red zone. Here's second down and eight. Dobbs pulls it back. And a high throw, incomplete. Intended for Josh Smith. Ellis Johnson has decided to dial up his man-to-man -man pressures now. Last two plays, he's brought pressure off the edge and played man-to-man. -man. Third and seven or eight yards now. I expect him to play similar. And if he does, the Josh Dobb find Marquez North. Give him a shot. He's at the top of the screen. Lane shifting out of the backfield, so an empty set here for Dobbs. And there was movement on the left side of the line. Bullard, the guard, and Antonio Richards in the left tackle. Both came out of their stance early. Prior to the snap, full start, 74 offense. Five-yard penalty, still third down. So that's two. They had six last week, two today here at home. And that's, this just drives Butch Jones crazy. And... Look like both of them moved yep. at the same time. You gotta, you gotta be disciplined. Listen to the count. Be disciplined in your set. So third down and 13. We'll see if Auburn comes after Dobbs here. Well, they'll rush four. And Dobbs with time. Off the fingertips of the intended receiver, Jason Chrome. Incomplete. And it's fourth down, and here comes the field goal team again. And we talked about the importance of Josh Dobbs' decisions. I know you want to take a shot down the field, but we talked about popping Pig Howard. He's going to come underneath. He's going to be wide open for a conversion. And Josh Dobbs gets a little bit greedy. There's good coverage downfield. If he gives that to Pig Howard, it might be a touchdown. Yeah, because Pig is pretty fast, and the defender trailing, he might have been able to outrun him to the end zone. Now, Polardi looking to tie the game here. And he 
puts it through from 42 yards out. So Michael Pilardi with a pair of field goals. We talked at the outset about Tennessee being a different team here at home. And they're playing well again today against the Tigers here in Knoxville. Two big games with postseason implications highlight a college football doubleheader today on ABC. At the Big House, where Brady Hoke is undefeated as Michigan's head coach, they take on a Nebraska team that won on a Hail Mary last week against Northwestern. And tonight in prime time, it's Notre Dame and Pittsburgh. College football on ABC, 3.30 and 8. And here on ESPN, SEC country, Auburn and Tennessee tied at 6. The Tigers a game back of Alabama for the top spot of the SEC West. Auburn has won five in a row since losing at LSU back on September 21st. Of course, LSU playing Alabama tonight. Who are you liking now? LSU. Do you? Going to pick LSU. Auburn's defense has been great of late. Matt Burger the last couple games has struggled, but I think he's going to get it going. And the road team seems to play very well in this series. Dangerous to going out of bounds. Mason had to field it, and he's tackled shy of the 15-yard line by Max Arnold. Let's check in with Tom. Guys, Auburn's going to start off at about their own 13-yard line, and the one thing you don't want to do in Knoxville is get backed up in your own territory, especially if you call your offense at the line of scrimmage. It's deafening down here right now, and what you'll notice is Tennessee on defense will lean into the gaps when Auburn checks at the line of scrimmage to try and hear a snap count, hear the play check, and you can hear this crowd now getting cranked up as Auburn takes the field. That's some good stuff there, Tom. Yeah. Although you rated Richie Cunningham's wardrobe for today's game. <laughs> I want to get your thoughts on the Alabama LSU game as a Mason with a good run on first down for the 20-yard line. That will have to wait, though, Brian. We're going to check in with Reese Davis now in the studio. Course, of course. Taco Bell's studio update, Dave. Florida State Wake Forest already up 14-0 after a second Wake Forest turnover in the first quarter. Jameis to Kelvin Benjamin, 21-0. Knowles can clinch their division with a win. And Winston inching closer to perhaps a Heisman Trophy. Oregon losing the other night. Close to a first down with Trey Mason there. And just to follow up on, on what Lukes was saying down there, if I'm Gus Malzahn in a, in a hostile environment, very loud, I'm going to let my offense run as fast as possible. I'm not going to try to check at the line of scrimmage. We've got a young quarterback. Call the play, go as fast as you can. That's what's been working really well for Auburn, but they, for some reason, have been trying to check a lot of these plays at the line of scrimmage. And they're having a problem getting the proper personnel on the field here for third down and one. They don't want to have to burn a timeout here late in the first quarter. They've got plenty of time on the play clock. And the quarterback, Marshall, Gets the first down and more. Marshall passed the 45 before he's pushed out of the 47. A 24-yard run on third down and a yard. Well, Brent Brewer, the linebacker, 17, was responsible for the quarterback. He made one false step and underestimated the speed of Nick Marshall. This is what Marshall does best, his speed on the perimeter. Here's Mason, and he fumbled the ball. And it's scooped up by McNeil for Tennessee. The Volunteers with a fumble recovery. That is the 21st fumble by Auburn. Only their eighth lost fumble. They've had a lot of trouble with ball security. Let's see here if Mason was down before the ball came out. Uh, it looks like he was on top of another player. Obviously, that ball is out. I did not see his knee down. He comes down on top of Dismukes, the center, and that ball comes out. Important to remember that ruled, obviously, a fumble on the field. Daniel Hood with the forced fumble. They will look at it. The previous play is under further review. The ruling on the field was a fumble recovered by Tennessee. Trey Mason had not had an issue with ball security, but everybody else on Auburn's offense has. Again, that's the 21st time they put the ball on the ground this year. Their eighth loss fumble, if the ruling on the field stands. 
Hard to tell if the arm is down before the ball came out there. Because yeah, he was on a teammate. He's on top of Dismukes there and his elbow. I don't know if you can see it right there. Before his elbow looked like it might have been down before that football came out. And again, if if that elbow was down, he would be considered down. As you said, ruling in the field is a fumble. Has to be indisputable video evidence to overturn that. Can't tell if the I knee's down on that angle. Yeah, I don't think the knees ever came down. He was on top of. But the question is that elbow. See if we can blow it up here. I think he's down there. Looked like the, yeah. the elbow was down and then it was stripped by Daniel Hood. But is it conclusive? It looks down. But are they going to look at this and say, hey, the call on the field was wrong? I don't think so. I, I, I don't think you can say that's indisputable video evidence. After further review, the ruling on the field stands for fumble. And that's what the officials determine. Now Ford, our replay official, David Smith, our referee, is not enough to overturn it. So a turnover by the Tigers as they were on the move. Tennessee taking over at its 43. Yeah, this is really what Tennessee needed to start on offense, getting some production, getting some points, and now they have their turnover early in this game. And here comes a reverse. They get the ball into the hands of Pig Howard, but Auburn not full as he loses a yard. Chris Davis tracking him down along with Craig Sanders. Yeah, great job by Chris Davis. You see him on the right side of the screen, keeping leverage. This defense is so disciplined, so well taught. Such an improvement over a year ago, and it really has everything to do with Ellis Johnson. Johnson, long time college football coach, 38 years in the business, very well respected in the SEC. First year as the D coordinator here, a design quarterback draw. Dobbs in the Auburn territory. Trying to outrun defenders at the 30-yard line. He stepped out at the 26, but a huge play on the ground for true freshman Joshua Dobbs, 32-yard scamper. Just a good read. This is a design run. They release the tackle downfield. And Josh Dobbs, we all talk about how smart he is and how nice and pretty of a football that he throws downfield, but you can't forget that he does bring that element with his feet. Neal trying to pick a hole. Great balance by Neal. Upended by Ryan Smith. Tennessee gashing Auburn's defense right now. And I'm surprised, quite frankly, that Auburn is not bringing a little bit more pressure on the young quarterback. They're kind of sitting back waiting to read what he's doing. And he's doing everything he can to make plays. And, and they're not putting any pressure on him. If you start running the ball like this, though, does it become harder than to put pressure on the quarterback? Because you're does. worried about stopping the run. It does, but if you have gap integrity, you can still bring that pressure and keep contained. That's the end of the first quarter here in Knoxville. Two field goals for Tennessee, a touchdown for Auburn, but a blocked extra point. Now some of our soldiers from around the world sporting their school's colors as we Honor all of America's heroes who served in our armed forces with Veterans Day on Monday. Also a shout out to Captains Nathan Faust and John Castle. Maddie Faust, our assistant director in the truck. Her brother is Nathan, her fiance Josh Castle. Thanks for all you do. One of my favorite weekends of the year, Veterans Day. We need to remind ourselves more about what uh, those fine young men and women do for us. Absolutely. Start of the second quarter here in Knoxville. A huge game for Auburn. Last road game for the Tigers. They've got Georgia at home, then a two-week break before the Iron Bowl when they host Alabama. So Auburn's still thinking about an SEC championship, if not maybe a BCS at large. Got their hands full, though, today with Tennessee. They run it to the left side, and again, look at Neal keep his balance, stay in bounds, and score! Touchdown! Tennessee! It's one of the better 
rush attempts I've seen this season. Ray John Neal is known for his feet. Take a look at his feet. Just keeps him driving. Keeps driving. Refuses to go down. Tightrope down the sideline. Get a little high step in. That looks pretty. You can high step all you want after that. 17 <laughs> yard touchdown run by Ray John Neal. Already over 50 yards on the day. And that's his 10th rushing touchdown of the season. There's an injured Auburn player at the 17 yard line. It's Chris Frost. And Butch Jones talked about being physical up front. This offensive line, he challenged them in practice. They put the pads on early in the week, and it seems their running back, Rajon Neal, got the message loud and clear as well. Great job up front and a finishing power run from Rajon Neal. Try to find out what happened with uh, Frost here. Here he is right here. He's up now and under his own power walking to the Auburn sideline. Hopefully all right. We talked about Auburn being very good in the red zone. Again, giving up a lot of yards, but not a lot of points. But they surrender a touchdown. But that was all Rajon Neal. And now Polardi on for the point after. What do you make of this so far, Brian? An Auburn team that comes in, people starting to talk about them as maybe a threat uh, to win the SEC, and uh, they're getting gashed by, yeah. by Tennessee well, here. It's a little bit of a trap, right? Because you look at Tennessee and what happened against Alabama and then Missouri in back-to-back -back weeks, and you think, well, we're just going to come in, roll the ball out, and run all over them. But Tennessee's at home, and they play much different at home. They almost beat Georgia at home. They beat South Carolina at home. Now Auburn's taking a punch in the mouth. We're going to see how they respond. You know, Auburn, this is a team that's been through so much. You have a lot of guys on this team that were here in 2010 that won the national right. title. Then last year, the disastrous season, three wins, 0-8 in the SEC. And now all of a sudden, you, you start thinking, hey, we're in a position where maybe we can win the conference, maybe get into the national title conversation if we take care of business and, and win out. And uh, you're in a situation here on the road now where you're in trouble because Tennessee has it going and the fans are in there. Well, Gus Malzahn has implemented a standard here, and he's a perfectionist by trade. And these guys, they've been through so much, this Auburn team. They had to suffer through that 3-9 and nine season a year ago. I fully expect them to respond, not only in this game, but to their coach, in fine fashion. Another touchback that'll come out to the 25 for Auburn as we check in again with Reese. All right, Dave, time for the Dr. Pepper 10 conference update. And in the SEC, Missouri leading the SEC East, down 3-0 to Kentucky. Maddie Mock playing rather than James Franklin, Dorio Green Beckham. That's why he was a highly recruited wide receiver. 7-3 Mizzou. Missouri trying to hold off South Carolina. SEC East. Carolina 5 and 2. Missouri 4 and 1. And Georgia not out of it. 4 and 2. Look at time of possession dominated by Tennessee. And Nick Marshall straight ahead. Marshall still going. In the Vol territory. Inside the 20. And he steps out near the 10 yard line. They'll spot him out at the 13. On the field, he is the probably biggest reason for Auburn's turnaround here in 2013. Well, you look at this running attack, it's so complimentary with these backs and Trey Mason, Corey Grant, and then you fake that speed sweep and you got Marshall right up the middle. 62 yard run. Now here's Mason bouncing it to the outside, heading for the pylon. Touchdown! Great response by Auburn on two plays. They go 75 yards. Butch Jones talks about learning how to win and have consistent level of performance. You get up in a game, you start to feel good about yourself, and bam, two plays. Auburn and this impressive rushing attack potentially ties up this game. First player for Auburn since Cadillac Williams almost a decade ago with rushing touchdowns in seven straight games. His SEC leading 14th rushing touchdown. 
This point after is good by Parkey, and we are tied at 13. And Gus Malzahn's done a great job of coaching up all 11 players in the running game. Wide receivers, tight ends to boot. Take a look on the outside. They get a couple blocks, and Mason's in for his 14th touchdown. Visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. Two touchdown drives by Auburn, both under 40 seconds, and we're tied at 13. Think about it. Kyle Frazier, Barrett Trotter, Clint Mosley, Jonathan Wallace. Those are the names of the quarterbacks since Cam Newton, but it seems like Auburn has got a keeper now. With Nick Marshall, touchdown pass today, and a big run set up Trey Mason's touchdown on the last drive. Well, both quarterbacks in this game have had big runs. Defenses have to account for the legs of both of these guys, and Nick Marshall, that last run, very impressive. Devin Young will run it out here for Tennessee. And stumbles and is out of bounds short of the 20-yard line. Gus Malzahn's offense can be a thing of beauty. Take a look here. This is the right, the right guard. He's going to come over and get a kickout block on the edge, which frees up the hole. And look at the reaction here from the linebacker. That's key right there because it gives the, Mo the marshal the hole up the middle. That way, a little hole there on the second level, but that's well executed. It's very difficult for these linebackers that play against Auburn's offense to be right. They have to trust their eyes. Otherwise, they're going to be in the wrong position. Pass to Marquez North in the flat, and he's up to the 24 for a five-yard gain. North of true freshman, 6'4", 215 from Charlotte. Really a promising young player for Butch Jones. And they've got some good pieces on offense with Pig Howard in the slot and Marquez North and some balance in the running game with Rajon Neal and now a quarterback that's getting a little bit of experience. So the sky's the limit for this Tennessee offense. They go out of an empty set here. Dobbs in the pocket and his pass in the traffic is caught by Jonathan Johnson for a first down. A dangerous throw with Jermaine Whitehead, the safety in the area. Well, when you play against man-to-man -man coverage, you've got to make some tight throws and catches, and that's great job by Johnson. Whitehead played it perfectly, but a conversion for Tennessee. Straight ahead, power run by Lane to the 40-yard line, gain of four. You saw Tennessee at Missouri last week in Joshua Dobbs' first start. How, how different does he look to you today so far in this game? Well, the biggest difference between last week and this week, he's having some time to throw the football. Missouri's defensive line can really get after the quarterback, and they did in that game. But so far, the Tennessee offensive line has given him time to read the defense, and when he's comfortable, he can be accurate. There's Lane, and Lane trying to power past the marker. It appears to have another first down to the 46. Gabe Wright, defensive tackle, making the stop but downfield. And it is a first down for Tennessee. Well, and the other difference is they're running the football today, and that takes a lot of pressure off the quarterback. And Butch Jones' approach this week in challenging those guys up front is giving him some early returns. And Dobbs gets drilled by Casanova McKenzie for minimal gain on the play. You know, as we watch Josh Dobbs, pay close attention to his body language, his command of the offense. A week ago, a little bit rattled, Brian. You referenced him not pass protecting as well. But when he's in the pocket, look at his eyes stay downfield. Look how he keeps both hands on the football. Very, very mature. Got a penalty marker down here. Prior to the snap, false start, 78, offense. Wow. Five-yard penalty, still second down. That's nine in the last six quarters by Tennessee. The third in the conference and fewest penalties. They, they just cannot, on the offensive line, keep their hand down. Boy, we talked with Mike DeJake and their offensive coordinator about it, and I asked him, is it, is it a new quarterback? Is it the Canes? And it hasn't been because... A lot of times they're in a silent cadence, so they can't, can't be the quarterback. 
Dobbs pocket breaking down. And Dobbs sometimes is at his best when that happens. But the speed of Auburn, McKinsey takes down the quarterback. Near the line of scrimmage, maybe a positive gain of one. Third down and long coming up. Uh, part, part of all these false starts, too, is, is the quarterback getting these guys in a huddle, looking them in the eye and saying, listen, you cannot continue to do that. We're shooting ourselves in the foot. But now with offenses that don't huddle, you don't have that opportunity to really get in their face. And he's a young quarterback, so it might be a little hesitant. Does he have the credibility to do that with this veteran offensive line? Third and 13, in trouble, Dobbs. Set inside the 30-yard line. True freshman Elijah Daniel. One of the guys that Tom talked about at the uh, top of the telecast, one of three true freshmen and very talented on this Auburn D. Yeah, take a look at the pressure up front. This is what's been the most different with Auburn. His defensive line, Eggway gets pressure. On the outside, D Ford has had pressure than Daniel. It's a lot easier to play coverage on the back end when you get pressure like that. Sure. Now Chris Davis, who had a... 42-yard punt return set up the first Auburn touchdown as the deep man. It's a better kick, though, from Pilardi. And Davis muffed it. Able to scoop it up. And breaks tackles. Look at Davis go. Past the 40. Down the sideline. Davis will take it all the way. Oh, what a play by Chris Davis. He muffs the punt. It doesn't matter. He takes it to the house. 89 yards. We talked about how dangerous Chris Davis, one of the best punt returners in the SEC. A couple of missed assignments there in their lanes. And once he gets to that second level, he's gone. It was 13 to 6 Tennessee just a few minutes ago. Point after by Parkey, and Auburn leads it 20 to 13. We talk about the turnaround from last year to this year. It's a mindset, it's a confidence, it's an expectation that you're going to go out and win every week. And Chris Davis, the senior from Birmingham, Alabama, puts his team back on top. ESPN College Football. Brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings, the official hangout for NCAA football. And the new LG G2. Accomplish more. With LG, it's all possible. Now we salute all of our courageous veterans. These around the world showing off their Auburn pride. We got some members of our ESPN crew that are vets. Alan Owens, Chan Hartzog, Micah Ray. Rick Schrattenbauer, Chuck Ferris, and our own statistician Joe Sullivan. Chris Davis with a punt return for a touchdown to give Auburn a seven-point lead here in Knoxville. Here's Devon Young for Tennessee. And again, Young will not reach the 20. Here's Reese. Great time for an innovative look brought to you by AT&T, LSU, and Alabama tonight at Bryant-Denny Stadium as Tennessee found out. Can't telegraph your pass as Landon Collins is going to jump this route and take it back for a pick six. Happened right before the half in the game. Zach Mettenberger's had interception problems of late, thrown five in the last couple of games. Be a great matchup tonight in the SEC. Reese, I picked LSU. Who are you picking, Reese? You know, I'm going to take Bama. They're playing well. Playing well defensively, and you got to respect that. Run play. Lane spun down in the backfield by D. Ford for a loss. We talked about Bama's defense only four points per game. Over the last four, A.J. McCarron has not thrown a pick during that time, really playing well. You know, the thing, we've got to debunk the myth. This is not going to be, remember two years ago, 9-6 Bama or right. LSU? This is, these are two offensive teams now that throw the football. It's not that pound you downhill running game. Wide open is Howard in the middle of the field. 
So they get good yardage on second down to the 24. Jake Holland on the stop. Third down and about five coming up. Uh, and Pig Hour better be careful. He's throwing th throat slashes out there. He's jab jabbing. He likes to talk when he plays, and I think the Auburn defense knows that as well, trying to get him incited. Tennessee beats South Carolina and might have beaten Georgia if not for a Pig Howard fumble as he was trying to get into the end zone in overtime. Georgia won that game. There's third down and great play by Neal to get upfield and get the first down. Boy, is he having himself a good first half. And a great decision from Josh Dobbs not to force the ball down the field. Third and seven doesn't mean you have to throw it eight or ten yards. Throw it to the check down and allow one of your best players, Rajon Neal, to make a guy miss and convert a first down. Dobbs 10 of 14 passing. 90 yards. Here's Neal in trouble. And down it goes at the 31 yard line at the line of scrimmage. Ladarius Owens and Jermaine Whitehead there for Auburn. And if I'm Mike Bajakian, I'm going to tell Josh Dobbs, listen, if we want to run the football, run the zone read, you're going to need to pull it a little bit more because there's been two or three looks where Dobbs should have pulled that ball and he's given it to Neal and got no yards. They've got to have balance with the quarterback running the football in Butch Jones' offense. Dobbs does have 32 rushing yards so far. He's going to throw it here. And the pass is overthrown. Trying to hit Howard. Robinson Threesy was running with him down the sideline. It's third and ten. One of the best things Josh Dobbs does is throw the ball accurately. That time, trying to get the ball down the field on a wheel route, and he just overthrew it. You're going to learn as a young quarterback, if you're going to miss, miss short, because at least you give your receiver an opportunity to go back and fight for that football, maybe get a pass interference. We saw that earlier. Now, he did get hit, and that's one of the reasons why that ball was thrown short, but North able to adjust. That led to a Tennessee field goal. Here's third and long, and stepping up Dobbs, and the flag is thrown. Dobbs is short of the first down by about seven yards, and this is likely a holding call, which would be declined. Holding, 78 on the offense. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. Alex Bullard having a rough day. A couple of false starts and now a holding call, and so Tennessee will punt. Auburn declines the hold. And uh, Chris Davis is gassed, so Quan Bray <laughs> is going to go back to uh, return this punt. Davis took the last one for a touch. Tennessee has got to get better on their punt coverage. It's twice in the game that Chris Davis has had returns. One for a touchdown. The first one set up a touchdown from Auburn. Yeah, 127 yards on punt returns, 144 yards on offense. And this is an excellent punt by Polardi. Will not even get Bray a shot. And the Tigers will have the ball at their 15. And we come back, seven-point Auburn lead midway through the second. The most storied conference in college athletics will live on a new network. Tradition has found a new home, the SEC Network, launching August 2014. For more, go to GetSECNetwork.com. Check in with Tom Luganville down on the field. Well, this Auburn offense, the first half, I've been charting their personnel groupings and their formations. They've been in the same personnel grouping and formation just twice, and we're just under seven minutes to go here in the second quarter. So it's, compl it's simplicity made to look complex. They give you a lot to prepare for, but Brian really only run two or three plays the whole entire half. Yeah, really, it's the speed with which they operate. They're trying not to be running all kinds of different schemes and plays, but just running them really fast from different personnel groupings. It's an illusion of complexity, but it's really very simple. And look how quickly the receivers got in position, and then a pitch to Grant, who's outside. Got the first down, and out past the 30-yard line, and to the 35. That's a 20-yard gain for Corey Grant, their speed back, averaging 10 yards a carry. And that's a wrinkle. We have not seen that. We've seen the zone read. We've seen the QB power. We haven't seen the pitch with the lead blocker in Jay Prosh. Prosh, their fullback, was in there now. And Mason shifting into the backfield. And here goes Marshall. Another big run for Marshall. 
inside the 45 of Tennessee. And if you talk to Gus Malzahn, he'll say we're a two-back play-action team. Yeah, power downhill team, and, and he's right. And, and it just looks a little bit different in how they get to it. But when you have the quarterback run ability like Nick Marshall, and you add in that inside element with Trey Mason and others, it's very effective. Marshall already over 100 rushing yards. He slips a tackle here. And gets about 12 more after a 22-yard run on the last play. And this is a great example. Same play, back-to-back, -back, and now they're going to come up and go as fast as possible. And it just puts so much pressure on the defense, and specifically the linebackers and outside linebackers, to make the right read very quickly. Mason, inside the 25-yard line, tried to keep his feet. Still got 15 yards. And Tennessee can't stop him now. And Tennessee's doing everything they can that time. They brought a corner off the edge thinking they were going to get that zone read again. Instead, they get the power up the middle with Mason. There's Mason again, busting it to the outside. Inside the 10-yard line, down to the 7. If I asked you the question at the outset why Auburn came out throwing the ball, they are running it right at and around Tennessee. And through him. Second and two. Keep an eye on Prosh here. 35, a fullback. And they're running it right behind him. It's the quarterback, Marshall, for the touchdown. What did you say earlier? Follow 35. 70-yard touchdown run by Marshall. He's got 122 yards so far. Three different complementary styles of plays on that drive. The zone read, a little pitch to start out, and then the quarterback power off the edge with Prosh leading. That's all you need. That's all Gus Malzahn needs in this offense to put, put points on the board. Kind of a microcosm of their season here. What a quick turnaround by Auburn. They were down 13-6. Now they lead it. 27-13. Jimmy Johnson has a slim lead over Matt Kenseth with two races left in the chase. The chase for the Sprint Cup at Phoenix presented by Quicken Loans Sunday at 2 on ESPN. With Brian Greasy, Tom Lugan, Bill Dave Pash in Knoxville where Auburn opened up a 14-point lead on Tennessee, and it's because of explosive plays. How about the first four plays on that last drive? 20, 22, 12, and 15 yards. And the quarterback is already over 100 yards on the day. Nick Marshall running the football. He's also thrown for a touchdown. And you don't typically think of a, an offense that almost exclusively runs the football being explosive, but that's the third touchdown drive today for Auburn under six plays. Here's Young on the return. Can he get past the 20? The last two times he hasn't, and this time he barely gets to the 20-yard uh, line. Let's go back and take a look at that touchdown. You'll see the effect that this scheme has on the defense. Jay Prosh is going to come around. You get the fake on the outside, which pulls both linebackers, and look at the great seam that Nick Marshall has. And not only does he have that scene, but he also has a lead blocker. That's the difference going up in that hole. And you don't have to block everybody. That's the essence of the scheme for Gus Malzahn. Think about it. When you talk about teams that are labeled zone read teams, even though that Gus Malzahn doesn't want to be called a zone read team, you don't see a fullback in there very often, right? Here's Marlon Lane past the 20 and to the 25 for about five yards. How does Tennessee respond, right? That's the question. How do they respond? Butch Jones is trying to build, as he says, brick by brick, trying to build the confidence in these guys, but they now have taken a punch early in this first half, and we'll see how they respond before halftime. They've shown they can move the ball, and here's Lane. Right on cue, past the 40. Out near midfield. Tennessee's well over 120 rushing yards. Here's Reese. Indoors. Wow. Here's 27-13, and the negative play as Lane is brought down. 
Loss of about four. McKinsey in the backfield for Auburn. Here's Tom. Butch Jones talks about this team being institutionalized in the sense that they only know negativity, but the negativity is not coming from Butch Jones and his staff. It's all energy. It's all positive. It's all about the process of how to win. Forget about the last play. Move on to the next. He was right in the middle of this offensive huddle before they took this series. Dobbs to the air. Nope. Quarterback run. And Dobbs spun down in Auburn territory after a seven-yard gain. Well, you think about it. They, they made poor hires. They, they brought in Lane Kiffin. He was here for a year. Derek Dooley then. That didn't work out. But Butch Jones ha has a track record of turning programs around or coming in and, and sustaining success. Followed Brian Kelly twice at Central Michigan and Cincinnati. Yeah, I think he's taking the right approach. Both these teams, right, coming off of very difficult years a year ago. Auburn a little bit ahead of ten where Tennessee would like to be. The big third down here. And Pig Howard gets nailed. At the line of scrimmage by Ryan White, a former quarterback. So it's fourth down, and Tennessee will punt. It's just good defense. Auburn playing man-to-man -man coverage on the back end. Ryan White has got the halfback in coverage, and he just comes off, reads the quarterback's eyes, comes up and makes a form tackle. It's a big difference from a year ago and how this defense for Auburn is playing with confidence. You wonder if uh, Chris Davis was shaken up on that punt return because they've got Quan Bray back there again. Been out there on D, but they're having Bray return the punts after the punt return for a touchdown by Davis. In traffic, fair caught at the 17-yard line. Maybe it's because he dropped Muff that one. Even though he returned for a touchdown, they don't feel good about his hands. So you're saying he got benched <laughs> after a punt return for a touchdown. That's difficult. Time for today's Affleck trivia question. Tennessee won the 1998 inaugural BCS championship game against Florida State, 99 game, 98 season. Who were the starting quarterbacks for that game? I'll give you a hint. For Tennessee, it was not Peyton Manning. It was the year after yep. Manning went to the NFL. I know that one. Yeah, Florida State, I got to think about yeah, that. Yeah, that's a tough one. Oh, so you're saying I'm not going <laughs> to. No, you were not going to get it. Not even worth trying. <laughs> you were. Uh, a young lad in Denver with uh, John Elway back uh, 99. You, you were focused on NFL football after winning your national title just two years prior. Actually, the year before. The year before. I would have liked to have the BCS championship game. We could have played Nebraska. Trey Mason on the carry doesn't get much. Auburn has all of its timeouts. A.J. Johnson on the stop. Some of you may be wondering why, why is Auburn running the ball? Well, they've been running it for 20 yards a pop here in this quarter. Yeah, I thought they might. Uh, we, we're going to see, at least Coach Malzahn told us, we're going to see a little bit of Jeremy Johnson, the quarterback, true freshman in this game. We haven't seen him yet, but maybe the two-minute drill is an opportunity. It's more of a throw than Nick Marshall. And Marshall brought down, you would think, a timeout here. Tennessee's going to call a timeout. Why not? So third down and long coming up. Butch Jones calls his first timeout. Let's go to the studio and check in with Reese. All right, Dave, coming up on Lex's Halftime Report, Florida and Vanderbilt. You think it's been rough for Florida so far? This score holds up, which is 17-0 at the moment. Not going to be a pleasant week in Gainesville. Also, the Seminoles making it worse for the Gators by looking brilliant against Wake Forest as Wake continues to throw interceptions and commit turnovers. And we'll look ahead to the LSU-Alabama game tonight. And by the way, tell Greasy if the checkbook number is right. I've got the trivia answer for you. See you at halftime. <laughs> I, I know you do because you were a college football savant, Reese. The uh, Affleck trivia question was Tennessee in the inaugural BCS championship game against Florida State, the starting quarterbacks, T. Martin, Marcus Outson for Florida Marcus State. Marcus Outson? There's no way Reese knew the answer to Marcus Outson. By the way, people in Syracuse still think that Tennessee shouldn't have won a national title. Week one, we had a <laughs> pass interference call against Will Allen that allowed Tennessee to get in field goal range and win the game. Were you in school then? Why are you saying Will? No, I was not in school. <laughs> I'm young, not that young. <laughs> Big third down for Tennessee, trying to get some momentum back. And Marshall throws a pick. Oh, my goodness. He threw it right to Jacquez Smith. A Tennessee touchdown. 
What a disaster with 128 remaining in the half. There is a penalty flag down at the two yard line. After the touchdown, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 55 on the defense. Touchdown is good. 15 yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. So that's uh, for a celebration by Jacquez Smith. Auburn was just trying to throw a safe slip screen. You know, normally those plays are safe. It's either there or you throw it in the ground. And Jacquez Smith, who was lined up at his defensive end position, just made a phenomenal play on the football. with the extra point a huge turn of events at the end of the half so here's Jacquez Smith right here on the end they're just trying to throw the ball quickly on the outside he plays down and then just reads the quarterback and that's great hands from Jacquez Smith look how he spiked that football yep. that's what they called there but they're actually trying to get the football to the halfback on a screen right there and Trey Mason's on the other side of Jock West Smith, and that just shows the athletic ability that Smith has. The fifth interception thrown by Marshall. He's thrown a little bit behind him, too, you yeah. saw there. Now, here, here's the thing. The half isn't over, and, and you just lost 15 yards because of that penalty, so Auburn could get good starting field position. Still has 128 to work with in two timeouts, but after that, and you're Gus Malzahn, you thinking, you know what? I'm going to play it safe here and just run the ball. Yeah, yeah I don't think you're going to let uh, Nick Marshall come back and throw it. All the damage he's done has been with his legs in this game. And that's the area, obviously, Nick Marshall needs to continue to grow, and, and Gus Malzahn knows that. But when you call a screen as a play caller, that's a safe call. So it wasn't like they were taking a risk there, a chance there. The quarterback's got to make it right and throw that ball away if there's any issue in between you and the back. Marshall has had such a good half, but big mistake there. Here's Mason on the 25-yard line. And Mason passed the 40 in the Tennessee territory. So they'll have the ball at the 45-yard line with 1.21 left and two timeouts. And it's Pilardi, who's the leading tackler today for Tennessee, the kicker. Boy, and Tennessee's coverage units have been the worst part of their team today. Punt return, now kick return. And I know it was a short kick, but Butch Jones is going to have a little talk with both coverage units at halftime. And it looks like we've got an injured player on the field, Geraldo Horta. Backup defensive back, shaking up on special teams. But five touchdowns scored in the second quarter combined. I think that's order right there. Oh, a little friendly fire. He got a helmet right on that bone on the lower leg. Painful. Orta, a sophomore from Valdosta, Georgia, getting help to the Tennessee sideline. So 81 seconds remaining for Auburn. Ball to Tennessee 45 with two timeouts left. How do you handle it now? Granted, you got great field position. I, I, I'm going to continue to run the same offense. They have two touchdowns in this game with two play drives. So it's not like you got to do anything different. Make Tennessee prove that they can stop what you do best, your bread and butter, that zone read game. Haven't seen a lot of Cameron Artis pain at running back for Auburn, but he's in there now. And the Vols fans hoping that the defense can step up again. On the end around, Ricardo Lewis breaking tackles, getting to the 38, clock running. Cody Parkey, the field goal kicker, his career long is 47, so they would need to get the ball to the 30-yard line of Tennessee for it to be in his range. And a 
Huge hole for Marshall. Inside the 20, another touchdown for the quarterback, Nick Marshall. What is going on? Six touchdowns in this quarter combined. And that's the third touchdown drive of two plays for Auburn. So you don't need a two-minute drill. Just run the ball, run your offense, and that time... A this is a 40-second drill. That's a third, 40, third touchdown drive inside 40 seconds. That was just a gross mistake by the safety for Tennessee right there. There's no reason that Nick Marshall, when he gets to that second level, should have green grass in front of him. So it's back to a 14-point lead for Auburn. Still 51 seconds left in the half. After Auburn's first two plays, the Tigers had negative 10 rushing yards. They now have 245 here in the first half. And Nick Marshall has 164 and two touchdowns. Booming kickoff. Tennessee will start on the 25. Well, you have 245 yards rushing because of mistakes like this. You took like the Daryl McNeil just a mistake you can't you can't be chasing the halfback when you've got contain on the quarterback I mean that's that's day one stuff and Liddell McNeil is starting for the first time this year a true sophomore because he's physical but he needs to be reading this offensive attack for Auburn a little bit better that's just too easy Tennessee will keep it on the ground as Neal stumbles to the 33 yard line Tennessee does have two timeouts not going to use one here though Clock at 35 seconds. And Neal out of bounds at the 41. Clock stops with 21 seconds remaining. Maybe this will change the play calling here now with uh, the ball at the 41. Two timeouts left. Maybe they'll look to throw it. You know, they got man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. Anytime they want to throw it out there, Marquez North and Pig Howard, I'd take my shot downfield if I'm Tennessee. What do you have to lose? They'll throw it here. And Dobbs will take a shot. Almost caught by North with one hand being defended by Davis. We saw him make that catch against South Carolina a few weeks ago. Well, it's a great play call. Give credit to Chris Davis in perfect position. Not only that, but he's looking back for the football. Despite the fact that Mark was north 6-4, give credit to Davis for coverage. I think he's healthy. They just yeah. don't want him to catch the ball right. on oh, punts. <laughs> Muffed the punt and scooped it up and ran 89 yards for a touchdown. <laughs> Here comes pressure off the edge, and the ball is fumbled. It's loose at the 34-yard line. And if Auburn recovers, there's time on the clock. They, it could try a field goal here. They stop the clock with four seconds left. It is recovered by Tennessee. Carl Lawson, true freshman. Coaches say is their most productive uh, young defensive lineman gets the sack. Yeah, and, and Tom Lugabill talked about him in the open. He uses his hands really well. By the way, he's beating Tiny Richardson, one of the best tackles in the SEC. But Carl Lawson is strong, physical. He's got a great future for Auburn. So the clock ran after it was recovered by Tennessee, and that's the end of the first half. Entertaining first half, in particular the second quarter. Six total touchdowns. Butch Jones now with Tom Luganville. Coach, you're at home. You've got tremendous momentum shifts, though. What do you say to your football team about how to handle all the ebbs and flows? Well, you just keep fighting. You keep playing, and we have to make some halftime adjustments, obviously. But it's a space game. We have to make plays in space. But you just keep playing. And you know, we've been through the ever flows of a game, and that's part of being mentally tough. As far as the defensive side of the football, with the zone read aspect and the quarterback keeping the football, what has to take place in the second half to wrap that up? We have to make plays in space you know and our safety's got to do a great job of reading it coming down and then being in position by their alignment is that assignment or technique both okay thanks coach thank you all right Lugie, 34 20 auburn leading tennessee and it's time now for the lexus halftime report so we get back to reese davis in the studio <laughs> Caught by 
C.J. Uzama. Keep his balance. Stay in bounds. And score. Touchdown, Tennessee. Davis will take it all the way. Oh, what a play by Chris Davis. Marshall throws a pick. Oh, my goodness. Marshall inside the 20. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN from Neyland Stadium in Knoxville. ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com. It is 34 to 20 as Auburn looks to go to 9 and 1 and 5 and 1 in conference play. Dave Pash, Brian Greasy, Tom Lugan build down on the field. On the first series, Auburn, deci Auburn decided to throw the ball mm -hmm. on the first three plays. They threw it twice the rest of the half, <laughs> only once in the second quarter, and that was the interception. They got back to doing what Gus Malzahn does best. Yeah, running the ball on the ground. They only had the ball for eight minutes. Tennessee had 22 minutes of possession, but they scored 34 points, and a lot of it has been on this zone read concept but Daryl McNeil the safety and Dontavis Sapp have been trying to figure this out all first half who do I go with do I go with the outside back that time Dontavis Sapp goes outside leaves a huge crease up the middle for Marshall he's done it inside he's done it outside he scored on the touchdown again Dontavis Sapp goes outside you get a kick out block with the guard and it's an easy walk-in touchdown for Nick Marshall. New stat, I want you to follow me on this from our, our man Slow Joe, the statistician. Yards per minute. They had the ball for eight minutes in the first half, Auburn did, 35 yards per minute. That's crazy to think about. Yeah, well, and, and the number of drives they had that lasted less than 40 seconds. Well, Tennessee has got to find a way defensively to, to, to answer that zone regain. We'll see what they do in the second half. Short kickoff fielded at the 10 yard line. Corey Grant with a cutback. Grant past the 40. Grant might take it all the way. A punt return for a touchdown for Auburn. Now a kickoff return for a touchdown. Chris Davis had the 89 yard punt return for a score. Corey Grant with a 90-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. It's all Auburn in Knoxville. People kind of glaze over the importance of special teams. In this game, we have seen it time and time again. The return teams for Gus Malzahn and Butch Jones after that first half, their coverage teams have been awful. Yeah, they got more issues in trying to stop the read option here in Tennessee. And this is a good kick, directional inside the 10. Normally have great coverage there, but you've got missed tackles. And, and quite honestly, a big problem for Tennessee right now is they don't have the speed on their coverage units to stay up with Auburn. Boy, the ball boys out running the Tennessee coverage unit there. <laughs> Not good, not good. Obviously, Tennessee went in, and I know Butch Jones, he's an emotional, fiery guy. I probably had a fiery message in the locker room at halftime, and to come out and give up that, I mean, that's, that's the worst thing possibly happened to you. Such an important game for Auburn. After this, the rest of their games are at home against Georgia next week. Then they get a week off before hosting Alabama. They have a shot to win the SEC, if not, to get perhaps an at-large bid. And if they win out, obviously a lot has to happen in front of them. But they may be even in the national championship conversation as the best one-loss team if they win out and obviously get some help. we still got you know, a whole month of college football here. Devon Young won't even get a chance to do what Auburn just did. It'll come out to the 25 for Tennessee. Let's go back and take a look. Butch Jones was going a little bit crazy. He's had a block in the back right there. It looked like it might have been. Certainly didn't have the head across the front. And uh, take a look from this angle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a block in the back right there. Sorry, guys. That's Crump, the linebacker. And Butch saw that, and he had a point. 
Now does Tennessee have the firepower with the true freshman quarterback Joshua Dobbs to come back from 21 down. A quick strike here to Marquez North to the 31. So a gain of six on first down. Dobbs in that first half was accurate. 12 of 18 in the first half, but threw for under 100 yards. No running here, not much for Neal. He gets dumped at the point of attack by D4. Tennessee was able to run the ball pretty well in that first half. 153 rushing yards. There's a penalty marker down here. I think if you're Auburn defensively, you're trying to. Offside defense, number 30. Penalty is five yards. Results in a first down. Trying to stay on sides, first and foremost, but you're trying to find something out about some of these younger players here in the second half. Talked about Montrevious Adams, Elijah Daniel, Carl Lawson. Can those guys continue to grow? We know what's coming up in a couple of weeks in the Iron Bowl, and they're going to need everybody up front to stop that running attack for Alabama. Neal picks a hole. And has the first down. Gets slammed down, but in Auburn territory after a 15-yard run, Auburn continues to struggle stopping Tennessee's run game. Well, and this is a great test. They were talking all week about this offensive line for Tennessee. And Ellis Johnson was saying this is the best offensive line we'll face this year. Good test. Here's Neal again. Another big hole to the 41. Uh, how, if Auburn can't stop Tennessee running the ball, I think it's stop Alabama yeah. in three weeks. It's, it's not an issue when you're up 21 points, right, in this game. But in a couple of weeks, it's going to be probably a much tighter game, and they're going to need to be a little bit stiffer up front against Alabama. Near second and three. And Neal, another solid run. First down to the 37-yard line. Ladarius Owens on the tackle. Alabama with a big one, obviously, tonight at home against LSU. Tied 5-0, Auburn 4-1. Then you have LSU and Texas A&M at 3-2. Auburn, really, its signature win in the Gus Malzahn first season was against Texas A&M. They lost to LSU. That was on September 21st as Neal gets to uh, the 36 for a one-yard game. And probably the biggest reason why they lost that game was they were manhandled up front. LSU ran the ball with Jeremy Hill at will in that game. And I know Gus Malzahn knows that. That'll be the biggest challenge for them in the Iron Bowl. Still, Malzahn, the leading candidate for coach of the year in college football and the best turnaround in the country. They stop Lane at the line of scrimmage here. So third down and long coming up. You I mean, think about it. This stage last year, Auburn was two and seven. They're eight and one this year, and four and one in league play. Oh, and, and not only that, they were the they were the worst offense in the SEC, and now they lead the SEC by a huge margin in rushing on the ground. So it's it's been an, an amazing turnaround with mostly the same guys, new quarterback, but everybody else was here from last year. Third and eight, a must conversion. And and Dobbs throws a strike to the 23-yard line to Marquez North for the first down. This is what they get excited about with Josh Dobbs. In the pocket, moving around, just a slight shuffle to his left, away from the pressure, and then that ball right on the money. Past the linebacker, Jay Collin, who almost made a play, but you see the arm strength of Josh Dobbs. Eighth play of the drive coming up. And this is going to be, look like maybe a halfback throw. Lane able to get positive yardage. About a half yard. Gabe Wright on the tackle. That looked like that was set up maybe to throw the football. And Lane didn't see anybody open downfield, so he took off. Yeah, absolutely. They were trying to get Jonathan Mincy the corner to bite on the outside. They teach that corner to watch that back. If he is going parallel and not downhill, then you probably should expect a pass attempt. And it was well done by Mincy. Officially no game. Dobbs to the air on second and ten. And that pass, not sure if it was intended for Howard or downfield. There was another receiver. Jonathan Johnson. It's incomplete. Bring up third and nine here. It's 
where if you're Josh Dobbs, you got to understand it's probably four down territory, down three touchdowns in the game, so you don't have to force something downfield. You can still take a check down, maybe bring up a fourth of management. And miscommunication between the quarterback and the receiver, Josh Smith. So it's fourth and ten. And Butch Jones electing to bring on the field goal team here. Probably tough to convert fourth and ten, so you take points after a good drive. Well, that's what you don't want to see is just a complete miscommunication. That ball thrown five yards from any receiver. At least want to get something there so you can attempt a fourth down conversion. Right. Pilardi has made two attempts already today. This is a 40-yard try. And it is true again for Michael Pilardi. He's been getting a workout today, chasing down returners, and he's got three field goals, but an 18-point Auburn lead. Uh, the greatest part about coaching the SEC is you're going against the best every week, and uh, that's what you coach for, and I feel very blessed to be a part. When people see us on film, uh, they should see our guys playing extremely hard, playing together, uh, you know, that playing good, hard-nosed football uh, with great discipline and uh, great success. I coach because I love kids. You know, I'm an old high school football coach. Uh, I love the game of football. I love setting goals and watching guys achieve them. Discover Game Changer brought to you by Discover Card. The opening kickoff to the second half. Corey Grant, 90 yards. The second return for a touchdown by Auburn today. A punt return for a score in the first half by Chris Davis. Tennessee has been able to move the ball. They just can't either stop Auburn's offense or their return units. And here we go again. We'll see how they defend this one. <laughs> I might start squibbing it down the middle of the field. <laughs> yep. There it is. <laughs> but Bray gets a beat on it. Oh, Breaks a tackle. And Bray past the 35. And all the way to the 45. you got to be kidding. Let's go to Reese in the studio. Putting up some serious return yardage here, Dave. Sports Center right now brought to you by Bank of New York. Mellon Vanderbilt continues to put it on Florida. Direct snap to Jerron Seymour. He's got two touchdowns. It is 24 to 3 in the third. Wow, Florida and Danger going below 500 at the beginning of the year. Looked like their defense might be the best in college football. Now they had some injuries. Well, yeah. It, Will Muschamp is in real hot water right now. Do you think so? I do. Absolutely. Remember what the name of Ron Zook, right? Yeah. They're, they're comparable right now. Went to the BCS game, though, last year as Marshall takes off again, steps out just short of the first down. You can't continue to have that brand of offensive football at the University of Florida. When you've got Florida State and Miami kind of taking the headlines and recruiting, it's going to affect your recruiting. And that brand, that boring, quite frankly, brand of football that he plays on offense is not going to fly if you lose him. And you contrast it with the offense that was there before, with Urban Meyer and two national titles. And they're going to air it out. Marshall going deep. Sammy Coates, we haven't called his name really since the first quarter. He leads the nation in yards per catch. They went and took a shot there on second and one, so it's third and one. Yeah, and, and Coates has been a real nice surprise for Auburn. Great compliment to this rushing attack. Almost like, you know, when you have those Georgia Tech offenses where they have the really good wide receiver that every now and then they take that shot down the field. That's what Coates has been for this Auburn offense. Can Tennessee get a stop here on third and a yard? Nope. Trey Mason. Gain of five. Well, Gus Malzahn knows on second and short that he's going to convert on third and short, so he's going to take a shot downfield. That's just good play calling. And, you know, I've been really impressed uh, with Gus Malzahn this year, not just in changing the psyche of, of these players and coming in and, and instilling confidence in them, but also his ability on game day to have the right adjustments with, with his offense that he knows better than anybody, always one step ahead of the defense. Marshall keeping, and look at the space. 
They don't even touch him. And he's inside the 30 to the 26, a 16-yard gain. You talk about the football side of it for Malzahn in terms of uh, X's and O's as we see the run here by Marshall. But, but what about the psyche of this Auburn team and how really with the same players he's been able to change the culture in such a quick fashion. As Mason is brought down at the 20, game of six. You know, I think what the biggest difference has been is he came in and he established a standard. And, and these players didn't have that a year ago, but it was just one standard. There was no more places to hide for these players, right? Last year, there was a lot of innuendo and talk behind closed doors. You could go into one coach's office and hear one thing, and another coach's office and hear another, and that's all gone. Marshall gets the first down, spun down at the eight-yard line by A.J. Johnson. It'll be first and goal. We were talking with Ellis Johnson, the defensive coordinator, and he likened it to, you know, you go into one, Talk to one coach, you get one flavor of ice cream. You go talk to another coach, you get another flavor of ice cream. And that's really divisive, and that can tear a team down quickly. There's Mason, and he's inside the five. Well, it just happened so quickly. You had the, the national championship in 2010. Cam Newton leaves, and then the next year struggled. And then last year, the nosedive to three wins and 0 and 8 in conference play that led to the change and Gus Malzahn who had one season as a head coach under his belt at Arkansas State granted he was a head coach in high school for a while he gets the Auburn job it seems like a perfect hire for Jay Jacobs he knows he recruited a lot of the guys on this Auburn roster Mason dives and is in touchdown Auburn the second rushing touchdown for Mason today and his SEC leading 15th on the season. But the tackling has been atrocious for Tennessee. Not only do they not know where to be to stop this offense, but once they're there, they've been missing too many tackles. I think atrocious is kind. <laughs> and Parkey makes it 48 to 23. Auburn pulling away midway through the third. ESPN College Football brought to you by Jared the Gallery of Jewelry. Truly unique designs that you won't find just anywhere. That's why he went to Jared and the all new 2014 Chevy Silverado. Nation's heroes wearing their orange and white. We've got the ROTC cadets here at Tennessee Veterans Week. And there are four men for Tennessee who died fighting for our country in World War II that are honored here. Their numbers retired at Neyland Stadium. leading 48 23 midway through the third quarter trying to get to nine and one and five and one in conference play half game back of Alabama plays tonight against LSU coming up later on ABC at 3 30 to the big house we go with Michigan taking on Nebraska Bo Pelini able to pull out a miracle win against Northwestern last week then tonight at 8, Brian Kelly's Fighting Irish looking to keep BCS hopes alive, facing Paul Christ's Pitt Panthers. How about Minnesota leading Penn State? Michigan State right now the favorite to win that division, and obviously Ohio State just rolling. Our offense right now playing as well, arguably, as they have. In the two years Urban's been there. Yeah, the one team and nobody's talking about the Big Ten is Michigan State. Well, that's what I said. They're right now the best team in the, in the leaders as Kroon picks, uh, gets the catch at the 31. Love to see that uh, defense go up against that Ohio State offense. That would be a great Big Ten championship game. Ohio State should move up in the BCS standings. How much depends on what happens in the Alabama game tonight. currently fourth but obviously with Oregon losing they'll be at worst number three in the BCS stands Lane brought down short of the first down at the 34 yard line the 
games remaining for Ohio State. Illinois on the road. Indiana at home. At Michigan, where they lost two years ago. And I, you know, I know Michigan didn't look good, hasn't looked good, quite frankly, in the last month. But that's a game where you, you can throw out the records. Neal taken down for a loss, so it's fourth down. We'll see what Tennessee does here down 25. And I, and I don't know off the top of my head how many times that there's been a Michigan or Ohio State team that's been ranked in the top five, undefeated, looking to go to the Rose Bowl and has been upset by the other team. But uh, there's been a number of them. So much more football left to play. I know we love to prognosticate right. who's going to be where, but... You know, Alabama and Baylor still have a lot of games left. Baylor's got several against ranked teams as it's fair caught by Davis. And of course, Alabama plays LSU tonight and then at Auburn and then perhaps the SEC championship game back in a moment. Jimmy Johnson with a slim lead over Matt Kenseth. Two races left in the chase, which is at Phoenix. The chase for the Sprint Cup at Phoenix presented by Quicken Loan Sunday at 2 on ESPN. And in a few years, Tennessee will play Virginia Tech at Bristol Motor Speedway. They should get about 150,000 people there Jeez. for a college football game. Auburn's been going pretty fast in this one. And we'll see if they slow it down here to eat clock. Or if they just run their offense, 25-point lead midway through the third. And here's Cameron Artis Payne, who's got over 500 rushing yards on the season. You look at some of the stops that Gus Malzahn has had in college, and then what's happened the year after, it's not just him. It's 107, some of the guys that left, Felix Jones and Darren McFadden, but still, Gus Malzahn is a big reason why teams have dropped after his departure. Yeah, that's an amazing graphic right there to see what, what happens after Gus Malzahn has left some of these places, Tulsa and Auburn in particular. And these teams have really struggled. Hardest pain again, wrapped up by A.J. Johnson at the 20, gain of one. You know, as we see Tennessee with a freshman quarterback, I think one of the things that Gus Malzahn does so well is manipulate the talent to accentuate the strengths and mask the weaknesses. You go back to Arkansas, that was a freshman quarterback in Mitch Mustaine. So what did he do? He took Felix Jones, he took Darren McFadden, and he masked the weaknesses of a freshman quarterback and maximized the talent through scheme and personnel. That's what Gus Melzahn is best at doing. Well, Wildcat was around, but he really popularized it. Then you saw the New England Patriots doing it with Ronnie Brown as the pass is off target on third down. Intended for Quan Bray, and so Auburn will punt. Well, the Miami, the Miami Dolphins, right, with Ronnie Brown and. Hey, excuse me, against yeah. the Patriots, yeah, the yeah. Dolphins, yeah. But uh, no, there's no question that uh, Gus Malzahn, everybody talks about his offense and his approach and, and how you know, he's an offensive guru, and that all is true. But I, I really believe that what's happened here uh, this year with Auburn has been even more accentuated is his personal style, his ability to lead, his ability to get guys to play at a high level for him and the expectation and the standard that he set at Auburn. Those are all things that he was never the head guy at any of those, but he's the offensive coordinator. But now that he's the head coach, he's added another element to, to his ability to coach these games. Fair catch made after the short punt at the 43-yard line for Tennessee. Now, Florida State's a machine. And, and with Mariota banged up and Oregon losing, Maybe Jameis Winston right now is the front runner for a freshman to win the Heisman Trophy for a second straight year. Uh, don't forget about a guy named Manziel and a guy named now Bryce Petty. In the double coverage and the pass is picked off by Therese. That's a difficult throw for a quarterback to roll right and then try to throw that ball all the way back outside the numbers on the other side of the field. You're going to see it's going to come all the way across, and Josh Dobbs is going to roll out, trying to hit Pig Howard to throw all the way back like that. That's difficult, but that's grossly underthrown. If you're going to do that, and I know Mike Bajakin practices all these things in practice, Josh Dobbs got to have the arm, and that just that just fluttered out of his out of his hand there, and that was an easy interception for the reason. Remember, Dobbs is replacing 
the injured Josh Worley is likely out for the rest of the regular season. They could go to Nathan Peterman who started the Florida game after Worley got hurt the first time but he struggled in that game and the coaches feel that Dobbs is the better option so we'll see if they stick with him. Yeah stick with him. I mean, he's your future. Marshall slipping a tackle out to the 31. He is over 200 rushing yards on the day and over 700 on the season. And the reason I say you stick with Dobbs is not because he's playing lights out in this game obviously but because you need him to get experience. He needs the learning opportunity that this game presents and any snaps you can get him is only going to be beneficial to you later on. Mason and a first down for Auburn out to the 40. Well, he had the Worley injury. That was in the South Carolina game when he hit his thumb on a helmet. That thumb surgery on October 29th has missed the last two games. Expected to miss a few more weeks. Here's the injury in the game we had here a few weeks ago that uh, Tennessee won. But to your point about sticking with Dobbs, you, you have games coming up, even though Vanderbilt's handling Florida. It's a winnable game. It's here. And then you're at Kentucky. So you can get to uh, to 500 and get to a bowl game in yeah. Butch Jones' first year as Mason is out to the 45. And that's been Butch Jones' goal all along. He's been very outspoken about that, was they want to get to a bowl game. That's their goal. And it uh, doesn't look like it's going to happen getting another win in this game. But next two weeks, certainly winnable games for Tennessee. But they have got to find a way on defense anyway to stop uh, these rushing attacks it's been the and quite frankly their coverage units in the kicking game it's been needless to say not very good today Auburn with 312 return yards oh what a cut by Nick Marshall and Marshall goes down but got the first down in Tennessee territory at the 49 yard line we're learning about Nick Marshall this season and we didn't know a whole lot about him coming in but take a look at the athletic ability here I mean this is it's pretty good right there I don't care who you are fake out some of these guys on the outside linebackers Nick Marshall shown his speed today that's 209 yards rushing closing in on the Auburn record for rushing yards by a quarterback and a big hole for Mason brought down at the 38. Marshall's only thrown it seven times. We made a big deal at the top of the show saying, hey, last week, because he was a little banged up, they only threw it nine times. They're only at seven in this game, and three of those were on the first possession. Mason to the 36 for a couple yards. Trey Mason, a junior who is over 100 yards again today. Seventh straight game of the rushing touchdown. He is the third leading rusher in the SEC. There's a chance that Gus Malzahn's going to have two 1,000 yard rushers this year with his quarterback, Marshall, and Trey oh, yeah. Mason. There's no question. And Gus Malzahn is not the kind of coach to take the foot off the gas pedal. You can see he's still coaching him up hard. He knows that this, that this Auburn team is still young in his system this first year he's in this system he knows there's big games coming up later on in the year and he's continuing to use every opportunity every snap of football to continue to have them grow whether it's on offense defense or special teams I don't expect for him to take the foot off the gas pedal at all in this game third straight road SEC game for Auburn that's the first time they've done that since 1986 after this they're home for their final two league games against Georgia next week then in three weeks the Iron Bowl with Bama third down and five and Marshall stumbled and close to the first down quarterback Marshall Alex Cozy in the left guard may have made the tackle <laughs> and he's on Marshall's team the first 
they're going to measure here to see whether he got the first down. And what's really interesting is Tennessee now is trying all kinds of different ways to stop this running attack. They're bringing pressure off the edge. They're bringing linebackers on the inside of the defense. And every single one of them, they're failing. It's, it's Gus Malzahn is just calling one step ahead of the defense in every case today. There's a first down. Also, uh, Malzahn has Rhett Lashley, offensive coordinator, played quarterback for him when uh, Malzahn was a uh, head coach in high school, as you see uh, the first down run there by Marshall. Yeah, I'm just trying to show the uh, blitz off the edge there and, and Gus Malzahn making the adjustments. He's getting that check from the sideline and making those adjustments. That's part of the, what makes this so successful on offense. There's Lashley, the offensive coordinator, talking with Malzahn as they are rolling into the fourth quarter with a 25-point lead. Visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. Auburn on its way to a 9-1 record, 5-1 in the SEC. With Alabama playing LSU tonight. Two returns for touchdowns. Kickoff and a punt return. Plus the quarterback, Nick Marshall, has rushed for two scores over 200 yards. He also has thrown a touchdown pass, one of only seven attempts by Marshall. It's been an impressive overall performance, but you can still see some warts on defense as uh, Tennessee has rushed for 184 yards. Press set of downs for Auburn as we start the fourth quarter at the Tennessee 28-yard line. Here's Corey Grant trying to get outside of that jet sweep. He's inside the 15 and pushed out near, they're going to say stepped out at the 14. 15-yard pickup there for Corey Grant. You know, they hadn't been running a lot of those lately, those jet sweeps. They were doing it earlier in the year. Maybe they just want to show the team's coming up. Hey, we're still that's still in the arsenal. We're still going to run that. Oh, yeah, they still have it. And Corey Grant is the guy that they like. We were talking with Coach Melzahn last night. And he's the guy that kind of has taken the place of Ontario McCaleb, right? Remember from the 2010 season. He's their horizontal guy. Mason shoes one defender. Close to a first down. Come up two yards short of the five. This, this offense is, is difficult enough to try and stop, but now when you're down 25 points and this Tennessee defense is basically given up, this tackling is, has gotten to be atrocious. It, it's like a hot knife through butter right now. There's no way Tennessee's gonna stop this offense. And Trey Mason now over 1,000 yards for the second straight year. 15 touchdowns rushing for Mason. It leads the SEC and is right at the top nationally. Here's Mason again. He gets the first down, didn't get the touchdown, but it'll be first down and goal. You know, as, I, as I look at the difference between Auburn and Tennessee down here from the field level, it's all about team speed. You don't see Tennessee with any ability to close the gap or cover ground. And the difference in explosiveness, especially short area explosiveness, we've seen it from Nick Marshall. We just saw it right there from Trey Mason is really the difference in this ball game and it's gotten the skilled players for Auburn into space and that's been the Achilles heel today for Tennessee. Oh, and now you have to on top of all that put effort on there too because uh, Tennessee is not giving supreme effort right now on defense. Another touchdown for Trey Mason his third of the day his seventh in the last two games and his 16th on the year. Tom's point about the, the team speed, that's, that's something that's been a problem for a while here. They're hoping that that's being rectified through recruiting. I believe, Tom, that I saw that Eric Berry's brothers both uh, committed to, uh, to Tennessee, both considered very talented. And the extra point makes it 55-23 Auburn. The most storied conference in college athletics will live on a new network. Tradition has found a new home. The SEC Network launches August 2014. Go to GetSECNetwork.com for more information. 
Well, 55 points, the most ever scored by Auburn against Tennessee. It's the first meeting between the two schools since 2009. This will be the sixth straight win for Auburn against Tennessee going back to 1999. An impressive performance on offense and special teams by the Tigers. Coming ninth in the BCS standings. Hoping to move up at least a spot this week. Here's Devon Young across the 20 yard line and then gets pushed out. Let's go! Let's go to the studio and check in with Reese. Dave Ole Miss trying to become bowl eligible against Arkansas. The Hogs haven't won an SEC game. What a day Bo Wallace is having. That's Dante Moncrief. This one will go 52. Wallace is thrown for 351 yards and three touchdowns. Hotty Toddy pulling away up by 17. So it looks like Arkansas will remain winless in Brett Bielema's first year. And Fayetteville in conference play. Josh Dobbs still in a quarterback. That pass deflected and then caught by Jason Kroom for eight yards. We mentioned Auburn number nine in the BCS standings. Let's take a look at the BCS standings. Brought to you by Allstate. Obviously, Oregon will drop from number three. What will be interesting is, well, if Alabama wins, you're going to have finally a clear-cut one-two. But three, four, five? You know, Stanford beating Oregon? There's a huge running lane. For Rajon Neal, who's over 100 yards on the day, he gets 20 there. Yeah, I think what will be really interesting now, and that maybe not just this week, but in the next couple of weeks, is Baylor. Because they beat Oklahoma, now they got Texas Tech, who's ranked 25th in the country, then they go on the road to play Oklahoma State, who's 14th ranked. Will they jump Ohio State in that process if they win those three games against ranked opponents back-to-back? -back? And that's... That's a big question. And where's Stanford with one loss? You know, it's and people need to remember as Josh Dobbs shows us his athletic ability. The loss, obviously, to Utah hurts Stanford, but also the games that they played uh, didn't look so great against Oregon State. Could Oregon State had four chances at the end zone there at the end? They beat Washington by three points. So uh, Stanford has a couple of blemishes on on their record. And we don't know who the other one-loss teams are going to be. What if Alabama loses? Are you going to say that Stanford's a better yep. one-loss team than Alabama? Mm -hmm. Even if the, the loss comes later in the season, should it matter if the loss is against LSU or Auburn as opposed to a loss against Utah? But it's totally living in the speculative here yep. with all this stuff. Go ahead, Tom. All right, we'll get Tom in here in a moment. But you know, trying to, to decipher who's going to be a one-loss team, it usually plays itself out. Well, and the problem, as, as we well know, Ohio State is really going to suffer from Michigan being down. They're, I mean, they're, they're probably Michigan fans today against Nebraska. They want Michigan to win, have as much strength as possibly can, and then hopefully uh, play Michigan State in the Big Ten Championship. That's really their only chance. And Alabama, you know, Alabama has three tough games, obviously, tonight. And then, obviously, against this Auburn team on the Plains, which... We can talk a little bit about that, how that matchup looks, and then obviously the SEC championship maybe against Missouri. And remember, even for the Florida State is just thrashing teams. They've had a history where they've had a stumble. They're not stumbling. NC State I'm last sorry. year. They're not stumbling. They're not stumbling. I, I understand that, but uh, with their schedule, what they have left, Syracuse. I know you're Syracuse orange. You think they're going to rise I'm not up? Not stupid though. <laughs> Here's third and one. Neil brought down. Here's to be short on the first down, fourth down. Because what Florida State has left, Syracuse, at, they have Idaho. Yeah. Okay. The, the Florida, Vandals. Florida's under 500. And Florida looks awful. And they'll probably play Miami again in, in, in the ACC championship. Florida State's not losing. So you can pencil them in the national championship game right now. One thing, had, had Wisconsin beaten Arizona State, that would have helped Ohio State's resume. That, yeah, that loss early in the year, the controversial loss, as Tennessee's going to go for it on fourth down and one. And they will not get it as Neal is pushed out. Auburn will take over on downs. Although I'll tell you, I don't think Ohio State cares right now about any of that. They, they just want to keep winning and put up points and hope to impress the voters. 
Auburn will take over on downs, leading Tennessee 55-23 with 9.35 remaining in the fourth quarter. So we'll take a break. Back to Knoxville in a moment. Your cold doesn't rest, but now you can. Coldies daytime, nighttime quick melts dissolve quickly to shorten your cold. Nighttime quick melts shorten your cold, plus help you fall asleep and wake up naturally. Coldies zinc ions released in your mouth inhibit the cold virus from replicating, making Coldies the number one pharmacist recommended cold remedy. I'm Ted Carcass, CEO, and I guarantee Coldies will shorten your cold or your money back. No questions asked. ESPN College Football is presented by Cars.com. Get the right car without all the drama. Cars.com. All drive, no drama. They've been arguably the surprise team in college football. Certainly the biggest turnaround from a year ago. Auburn. An impressive road show by Nick Marshall. The quarterback has rushed for over 200 yards. Two scores. He threw a touchdown pass, and Auburn's put up 55 points. Cameron Artis Payne on the cutback. Out past the 40 as Auburn is closing in on 400 rushing yards. They were at negative 10, by the way, in their first two plays. This is the last road game for Auburn. Next week, home to a Georgia team that's banged up, struggling even today with Appalachian State. Then a week off before hosting Alabama in the Iron Bowl. It'll be interesting. I, I don't think that Auburn struggles much with Georgia. Uh, I, I think with their pass rush, they can get after Aaron Murray a little bit, and Georgia's defense is going to have a hard time slowing this offense down. The question is, in that Iron Bowl on the Plains, how will this offense hold up against that Alabama defense? I don't, I don't think there's any question they're going to have some success moving the football, but can they score enough points and hold down A.J. McCann? Artis Payne, big run into Tennessee territory to the 42. Let's get Tom in here. You know, so much of that matchup in the Iron Bowl as we look ahead, I think it's going to have to do with how does Nick Saban defense an athletic, dynamic quarterback? Because if there's one thing that we've seen from Alabama when they've had to play that type of player, they struggled. It's taken them out of their comfort level of dictating to the offense how difficult it's going to be to move the football. I think that's actually a great chess match. Even though Alabama is more talented, Auburn brings some mismatch issues that Nick Saban does not like to defend. Well, and we know, Tom, the history with Gus Malzahn and, and Nick Saban with Cam Newton and that, and that offense in 2010. I think uh, there's an opportunity. I think the one thing that we're going to see that's going to be magnified, Nick Saban is the best in the business at trying to take away what you do best. And if you're one-dimensional, it's going to be a struggle. I think Nick Marshall will have to throw the football at least a little bit in that game to take the pressure off this running attack. Well, he might have to throw it a lot because from what we've seen today and what we've really seen the last few weeks, nine pass attempts versus Arkansas, just seven out of Nick Marshall today, uh, that's not going to cut it. And if they establish the line of scrimmage, even though this is on the road for Alabama, they establish the line of scrimmage and force Auburn to throw. Auburn, I don't think, is the same football team offensively. There's been games where he's had to throw as they run that sweep again with uh, Corey Grant trying to get the first down, come up short. But that was against Mississippi State. Now, he did lead the team down the field, come back, yeah. win, game-winning touchdown pass with 10 seconds left. He had to throw against A&M. But that's Alabama defense is a you know, different deal. I don't I don't fault Gus Malzahn for throwing the ball nine times last week, seven times this week. If you run the ball like this, why would you throw? I, I don't I don't. It doesn't bother me the number of attempts. Of attempts. Do it right. as long as you can do it. Do it. Yeah, and, and he did throw the ball against Mississippi State. He did throw the ball against Texas A&M. Yeah. Both games that they won uh, in impressive fashion. So I think Nick Marshall can can do that. I'm just I'm just wondering when you put up against Alabama, you're gonna have to do it on a more steady diet. Artis Payne gets the first down to the 29. It was a seven-point game towards the end of the half. There was a pick six by Marshall. And it was those kinds of plays that make you wonder, okay, in a critical situation, you know, can he make the right decision? Instead of throwing that pass, just throw it in the dirt yeah. and live to play the next down. I mean, you, you make that kind of mistake against Alabama as uh, Jeremy Johnson is in for the first time. True freshman. He's played a lot this year, started a game. 
They want to get him in the normal rotation. We thought we'd see him earlier. Corey Grant to the 25 and tackled at the 23, a gain of six. Johnson, now he looks like Cam Newton, at least from a size standpoint, 6'5", 220. Guy takes one snap and you're... I, his body, not <laughs> him as a player. Relax. <laughs> a no. true freshman has been impressive when he's been out there. Yeah, and, and I, he started the Western Carolina game because Nick Marshall was hurt. He's been kind of a change-up guy uh, the rest of the year, but he's got a big-time arm. We're watching him down on the field before the game. He can throw it through the brick wall. There's no question about that. He's, that's how he's different from Nick Marshall. Doesn't have the speed, quickness, and agility of Marshall, but if he runs the football, it's more inside the tackles, that quarterback power that Gus Malzahn likes. And the timeout called here to avoid the Time. delay of game. Coming up in about a half an hour on ABC, it'll be Nebraska and Michigan. And then tonight at 8, it's Notre Dame and Pittsburgh. Brady Hoke has not lost at home as Michigan's head coach. There's some pressure in that game now. Those two programs, a lot of history, and they've been down the last couple of weeks. I know last week Nebraska had that uh, miraculous victory, but the loser of that game is going to be tight in their city. Artis Payne on the carry. 19th straight run play for Auburn. Close to a first down. Nebraska had the Hail Mary win last week. We had him a couple weeks ago lose in Minnesota. That so, loss doesn't look so bad no, now, right? I mean, no. Minnesota, boy. Their defense is really good. Rasheed Hageman likely a first-round pick. They still have a chance to make some noise in that division. It seems like Michigan State's pulling away, but Michigan State has to go to Nebraska next week. They still have to play Minnesota. Yeah. Artis Payne off the right side. He's inside the 15-yard line. Let's get Tom in here for more on Jeremy Johnson. Tom, our national recruiting director for ESPN. Well, Jeremy Johnson is a big, strong-armed guy, Brian, as you referenced, out of Montgomery, Alabama. And keep in mind, Gus Malzahn and Ralph Lashley, they had been recruiting him when they were at Auburn prior to coming back to Auburn. And he stuck with his verbal commitment to Auburn, signed with him even after Gene Chizik was let go. So now all of a sudden you've got the coaching staff that was on him all along now gets the opportunity to coach him. And a lot of fans, I think, were wondering early in the year, with Jonathan Wallace having played, with Kyle Frazier having played, why would you burn the red shirt of this very talented young man to play against Western Carolina? Well, I think it was very simple. Number one, the battle to be the starting quarterback was very close in the summer between Johnson and Marshall. And number two, if something did happen to Marshall, they did not want Jeremy Johnson to have to go into an A&M or go into an Iron Bowl and having not played. So very calculated move to play as a true freshman for Jeremy Johnson. He's got a very bright future in this offense. Hey, Tom, you mentioned Kyle Frazier. He's in the running the Wildcat right now. He was a quarterback last year, was moved to safety, then moved to receiver. They're giving him a chance here to run the ball, and he does not get the first down. going to be fourth down. We'll see if they keep him on the field here, but throwing a little bone to Kyle Frazier. Well, they've done that a little bit time to time in the last couple of games, bringing in Kyle Frazier and having him in uh, goal line and red zone situations run that. Yeah, Wildcat a little bit, although it's hard to call it a Wildcat when he's a quarterback. Right. You know? <laughs> but he's not officially anymore. It looks that way with a 25 yep. number back there. But... Although there's a guy wearing 98 playing quarterback. <laughs> Maybe Devin Gardner, in case you didn't know, Brian. As Frazier goes high into the air and picks up the first down. It'll be first and goal. Well, guys, I'm down here right now standing next to Rhett Lashley, the offensive coordinator, and Gus Malzahn. And, you know, they work very, very closely together on the game plan and, and the communication throughout the game. But it's very clear, Gus Malzahn's a play caller, but not on this last drive. Rhett Lashley's, Lashley's been calling the plays. I think this is an opportunity for Gus Malzahn to manage the game, allow his offensive coordinator to take the reins, get some more experience himself in operating the offense on his own. Was that the Watch ESPN app on, on the card that the, that the coach put up there? 
I saw the Twitter label. Yeah, it's right it's next a, to your mug, center. actually. No, that's the ESPN Score Center, where you go and get your, all your scores. We've got an Instagram on there. I think there was a Dave Pass uh, caricature. <laughs> we had a iTunes logo. Let's see, Yahoo, okay. Twitter, you name it. And they probably all mean nothing. These are sponsored plays for the Auburn Tigers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeremy Johnson back in there just trying to run the clock out here. Get out of here with a win. Go to 9-1, and 5-1 and one in the SEC. Artis Payne brought down at the 5. And the best turnaround job by anybody in college football this year. There are a lot of candidates for Coach of the Year, but I think Gus Malzahn, if they only lose one more time, that's to Alabama. They got a really good shot at getting the BCS at large. Absolutely. I mean, if they beat Georgia and then they beat Alabama and then they, you know, win in the SEC championship game, how could you not say they're in that conversation? Well, if they if they win that, then they're, you know, they're going to obviously get, yeah. at least get the SEC bid and possibly play for the national championship. I'm saying if they lose a game still. If they lose that second game, oh, they still have a good yeah. shot at getting a BCS at large. You're going to get two teams from the SEC in the BCS. Here's Artis Payne. And we'll see if that's the final play. And it looks like it will be. An impressive performance by Auburn on the road. Nick Marshall with 214 rushing yards and two scores. He also threw a touchdown pass. He only threw it seven times the entire game. And Auburn also had a punt return and a kick return for touchdown. Well, it was impressive to come on the road and take care of business. In the first year for Gus Malzahn, you always wonder how you're going to play on the road. Tough place to play. And they came with their A game and dominated this game. They're just a half game back of Alabama in the West. Alabama playing home against LSU tonight. Now Tennessee has to win its final two games to get bowl eligible in Butch Jones' first season. We'll be back to wrap things up in Knoxville in a moment. We're back on ESPN's College Football presented by Cars.com. Dave Pash, Brian Greasy after an Auburn 55-23 win. Uh, the Tigers were down in this game, but then they went to what they do best, and that's running the football. And that extra element that they have on special teams with yeah. good return men, uh, that's going to be a challenge for Georgia and Alabama to stop that as well as uh, the offensive offer. We keep waiting for defenses to say this is a one-dimensional offense and we can stop one dimension. Well, 444 yards on the ground today, mm -hmm. and if you add in those special teams, which part of the credit goes to Auburn for good special teams and Chris Davis, big part of that is Tennessee was awful in their coverage units today, but certainly Auburn and their coach who is a lot very understated at times to say that they played like a top 10 team today. They have a lot of confidence going into Georgia and Alabama. Their head coach Gus Malzahn and he is standing by with Tom Luganville. Coach, seven pass attempts on offense, but you yeah. ran the heck out of the football. That's been the whole mentality yeah. of this offense. Why did you early on come out and attempt to throw the football? Well, you know, we just want to keep off balance. We figured they'd walk some extra guys down. We hit the wheel route there. That was good, but then we figured out we were able to run the football. Quarterback ran it well. Running back ran it well, and our line did a good job. The kicking game play for you yeah. today. You're on the road, tough environment. When you needed a yeah. pulse, you got one out of the special team. Yeah, we feel like we got one of the better special teams units and all. All, all the country and I think they showed that today and uh, helped us win the game. How about this football team going forward? It doesn't get any easier. What do you have to say about their focus in terms yeah. of each and every week dealing with success? You know, I was worried about this one. I mean, they've been playing great at home. Uh, they're an up-and-coming team. Our guys came out, took care of business. Uh, they played like a top-10 team today. All right, thanks, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. And they're ninth in the BCS standings. We'll see where they are tomorrow night when the uh, next BCS standings are released. Of course, a lot depends on what happens with Alabama in its game with LSU tonight. Auburn currently a half game back of the tie for the top spot of the SEC West after a 55-23 win in Knoxville.